All right, so welcome everyone. Um, I am Makita with Southwest Louisiana Credit Union, and we wanna thank you again for joining us um, on your lunch break, perhaps, or just spending this um, time with us today. We are gonna talk about credit cards and everything that you need to know. We have some credit union professionals on today that are going to be able to answer um, any of the questions that you may indeed have um, about credit cards. And we're gonna use this wonderful PowerPoint here as a guide for us. So we are going to go ahead and get started. This is credit cards and everything you need to know. Ms. Cheryl, you might wanna go ahead and unmute yourself. Tell everyone hello. Hello, everyone. All right, we can hear you fine, so that's great. All right, let's see here, there we go. So Ms. Cheryl, let's just kick it off. And um, we're just gonna go with the basics here. Let's just talk about, you know, what's, you know, what is a credit card and, and that, um, what kind of credit that is. Okay, so basically a credit card is um, basically just a revolving line of credit. Um, it allows you to make charges at any time um, up to the amount of your specific credit limit. So if you have a credit limit of say 500, you can only go up to that, uh, that credit limit. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, you hear a lot of things about credit cards um, as, as being a, a form of credit, you know, or a one type of credit. So um, this here just kind of talks about, um, you know, what are some ways that credit cards can be a great way to help you, you know, to do these things or credit cards are great because of these things. So can you like just go through some of these pros and kind of talk about, um, you know, why credit cards are great to have in this way? Okay, so um, one of the first things is helps you to build your credit. Um, there are basically your three types of um, credit lines that you would want to have on your credit report. Revolving, that's your credit card. You wanna have um, a secured, so if you have like a, a automobile or, um, or anything like that, anything with collateral, um, that's another type of credit. And then you also wanna have your unsecured, so like your personal loan. Um, so your credit card, that is one way to help to build your credit. Um, with the credit card, you can use it for emergencies. Um, so that you won't have to um, necessarily wait to go in and put in an application for um, you to be able to get a loan. So that's an, another pro for having a credit card is that you can kind of use it at any time. Um, with the credit card, you do have the flexibility to pay it over time. Um, your payments are based off of your, um, off your, off your balance. So sometimes that may fluctuate. So you do have that flexibility. Um, it's convenient. I mean, you can go to any merchant and use your credit card. Um, it also lowers your cost borrowing compared to other loans. With credit cards, you also um, have the opportunity to earn reward points um, that you can use for cash back, hotels, um, anything like that. So that's a great benefit. It's better than you than having actual cash money on you, um, having your credit card. Cause I know nowadays a lot of people they don't, we just don't carry cash. So it's good to have a, a you know, a credit card. It also helps with um, one of the pros is fraud protection. Um, it helps with that, as well as um, improve financial literacy. All right, very good. So um, I've heard, you know, and I think it's, we're going to get into it later on in this PowerPoint. It might be coming up soon. Um, you talked about it, you know, potentially being better than cash sometimes um, for whether it's for the fraud protection or just, um, you know, a lot of times we don't carry cash, but we'll have a card. But I've heard that um, you should use your credit card like you do cash. So basically, if you can't, pay, you know, look at paying it off or have a plan to pay it off, maybe that's something that you should reconsider. So I guess the point in all that is having a plan when you do plan to use your credit card, have a plan to pay it off. Yes. Um, all right. So let's see. So this just talks about choosing the right card for you. Um, and so um, what I've learned here at the credit union is that, you know, you want to look at, uh, of course, your interest rate, 
that's off the top. You want a credit card that's going to give you or offer you a low interest rate because that's the cost of the credit that they give you. That's the cost that you pay for the credit. Um, we're going to learn about that a little bit more about paying it off before the interest hits and that kind of thing. Um, and cars that have like cash back options. I hear a lot of people, a lot of friends that I have, um, you know, have cards where they get points that they can redeem for flights, for hotels, and they use their credit card points, you know, when they get ready to go on vacation. So obviously you want stuff that's going to um, give you rewards um, for using that particular card um, and any other special offers and things like that. But those can get really tricky. So you gotta be careful. Um, uh, isn't that right, Miss Cheryl? You got to be careful with, with the rewards and things. Don't just buy um, mindlessly to reap a few points or anything like that. Right, because those those uh, points, reaping those few points can cost you in the end if you, like you said, if you don't plan ahead for it. Um, and, what, and I know we're going to get to this later, but yeah, making sure that you um, try to make sure you pay your, your payments on time, if not before, um, so that you won't get charged that, that interest. Yep. All right. So I always look for a card that has some type of rewards and cash back is even great. Um, but you have to not get suckered in as well um, to spending or charging mindlessly um, just to, you know, get something where you might get $5 off of something when you went and charged $5,000 to get $5. So, yes. so um, you know, just to think about things like that. Um, the rewards are great. Um, and it just, it just depends on how you plan to use the card and how you plan to repay the card um, or repay the, the, um, repay that the, the balance on the card to know, um, you know, how to best seek those rewards. Right. Okay, this is talking about, you know, how much, how much of your credit card or your credit available, um, availability you should use. You got it. Yes. <laughs> so, um, basically on a credit card, you want to try to stay under 30% of your usage um that helps as far as like uh with your debt to income ratio if you keep a low balance on your card and you don't charge up to the limit um it's going to help with your debt ratio uh whenever you go out to get other loans and if a if a lender sees that you know you're at your balance or close to your to your uh balance on your card um it kind of indicates that you might be overextending yourself in credit. Um, so the, I guess the golden rule is to try to keep your credit card balances under 30% usage. All right. I've heard that, um, you know, it's like the 30% rule. Um, so I guess, you know, and that kind of, you know, goes with if you have multiple, if you're using multiple credit cards and, and things like that, that may be a way to, um, to, to, uh, you don't want one card to be at 30%. You don't want, you want to try to keep them below. Um, yeah. And so if you need to, you know, if it's something else that you need to buy, maybe you need to look at an alternative form of paying for that um, instead of um, loading it up onto one credit card or even, uh, another credit card because you don't want to create too much credit card debt. Right. Then you got to keep up with how you pay it. You got to keep, you got to add that to your payment, uh, repayment plan on, um, on how you repay that. But if you're real organized and uh, keep a good calendar or when these things are due, then you can do it. You just don't want to um, spread it out, spread yourself, like I said, over extending yourself. Um, you don't want to do that unless you have a really um, good solid plan on when those payments are due and making those payments on time um, before the interest starts to hit. And I think we're getting to that here um, shortly. I think, let's see, we go, oops, there we go. <laughs> this talks about grace periods. Um, and I know um, on credit cards um, and even like loans and things like that, we hear about, you know, your payment is due on this day, but you have until this day to pay it before um, your before a late fee will hit or in the case of a credit card before the interest will start to hit. So um, Ms. Cheryl, I think Ms. Karen's in there too. So mm -hmm. um, Ms. Ms. Cheryl or Ms. Karen, whoever wants to talk about grace periods um, and just the benefit of or the goodness of grace periods um, when planning to repay your card and how that can work for you. 
<laughs> okay, so having a grace period, yeah, it's it's a great thing because um, on a credit card, you do have your due date. Um, and so like, for instance, when, when you're, when you purchase something on your credit card, that's kind of your grace period from when uh, interest is going to be charged on your card. So you can make credit card purchases and not have to pay any of the interest. Um, it's almost like an interest-free loan, if you will. Um, as long as you pay it before that grace period or before the that due date um, due date comes up. So that helps. Um, typically it's between 20 to 30 days, the grace period before your interest accrues. Um, so if you can make a purchase and then pay it off before that time is up, then it's not going to cost you any interest. And you're just basically paying for that, that purchase without interest being added on. Gotcha. And that's the goal. That's why you talk about um, when I made the comment earlier about, um, you know, using it like cash. Um, that's just one tip that's out there. You know, basically, um, if you if you can't afford, you don't want to put yourself in a bind to where, you know, you won't be able to make, whether it's the minimum payment or any payment on, you don't put yourself in a bind. So you don't have the cash to pay it. And you know that, you know, it's an astronomical expense that you're putting on a credit card. Just remember that you still have to pay it back, regardless of what the minimum payment is. Um, you got to, you know, minimum payment, you at least got to make that amount. Um, but you just don't want to put yourself in a bind to where you're charging something that you know you may never be able to actually pay off. Um, right. So just be mindful, have a plan on how you intend to, um, to, to get that debt from under you at some point. And my, my suggestion to ones that are trying to build their credit um, or even rebuild their credit, my suggestion is like use a credit card for gas purchases. You know, you go to the gas station, you use it for gas, and then you can pay that off. You don't have to wait for the due date to make your payments. And I think a lot of people think, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay it when it's due because that's when it's due. But like we were saying, to get away from having to pay the interest on a credit card, you can, you can pay it before the due date. All right, awesome. Okay, I was answering a question in the chat, actually. Let's see. My little mouse isn't working. There we go. So this, um, Ms. Ms. Cheryl, you were just kind of talking about this and we were kind of hinting um, about paying, you know, paying in full and paying on time. So, um, and I, I can just, I'll say what it says here. It helps you stay out of debt. And it helps to also build your credit while enjoying the perks and benefits of your credit card um, to pay it in full and pay it on time. So um, I know people, and I know that some people use their credit cards and they put all of their, um, their expenses throughout the month, whether it's you know gas or groceries or um, just leisure spending, whatever, they put that on the credit card instead of swiping their debit card for it. And then at the end of the month or whenever that bill comes due, they pay the bill off, they pay that credit card bill off in full. Um, and they're still reaping the perks and the rewards and they're getting points and that kind of things for the charges that they've made um, through the month, but they're paying it um, before the interest starts accruing on the card, um, where, the, where the interest hits the card. Um, so really you're just paying off what you put on the card and you're averting um, the extra interest from being added on to it. Um, and, and so I don't know if you want to add something to that. Yeah. And, and that pretty much goes into what you said about having a plan. Um, if you have a plan to be able to do that and know that you're going to be able to pay that off, um, that's a great benefit. Like you said, you're, you're able to earn the reward points, um, which can convert into cash at some point. Um, so that helps out. Um, but once again, like you said, if you don't really have a plan and you're just using your card and not being able to pay it in full or paying it on time, then it can eventually, it, it'll cost you because if you don't pay it on time and if you pass that grace period, then you have late fees that are added on. Um, so like you said, just having a plan on how you want to and actually can use a credit card, um, yeah, it will be 
very beneficial. And I know I'm I'm calling Karen out in in that she didn't have to get on, but um, she, Karen, Karen stepped out for just a second. Okay. Oh, that's okay. She, she was out. basically saying, you know, if I make if I charge some gas, you know, today, don't run out and pay the car. Pay that thirty dollars off today. You know, um, pay it off when the bill like when the bill comes. Um, pay it off at the, uh, at the end of the month or whatever. Um, so you pay it all off at one time. Don't just charge one thing and then go and pay it off because I think it um, it's counterproductive, I guess, at that point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you you want yeah you want to be able to give it time to um, actually report um, to your credit to the credit bureaus for your credit history, but just trying to get um, so that you won't have to if you plan ahead and won't have to pay the interest and that would uh, of course save you money. Gotcha. All right. So this was really fun to put together. Um, this one's called the minimum payment nightmare. Um, and so, you know, this is something that I had to learn even growing up um, when I started using a credit card myself. A lot of times we get our statements in and um, we look at that minimum payment. Um, and as a, you know, when I was younger, a first time, you know, credit card user, I didn't want to pay any extra on my card. I only want to pay the minimum payment, you know? Uh, that was that's what was attractive you know and a lot of times um you know it's it's attractive to us when we spend because we say oh you know we put something for 50 we charge fifty two hundred dollars for whatever um on a credit card but when the payment comes you know but i only have to pay fifty dollars a month because that's your minimum payment well um the credit card companies are your your credit issuer when you get your statement in there's this cool little box that you see here on the screen that they disclose to you very specifically. Um, if you only make the minimum payment each month, how long it's gonna take you to pay off that original debt and how much you'll actually end up paying back, which is mind blowing. And a lot of times we don't read or we don't look at that little box or we look at $52 or whatever that minimum payment is and that's all they're getting. And we, you know, next month I'll shoot you another $52. But My if you take time to see what they're actually telling us, um, like, for instance, in this example, not only um, is there a $35 uh, late fee potentially, but they tell you that if you make no additional charges using this card each month and you only pay the minimum payment, it'll take you 23 years to pay off $5,286. $5, and then you'll actually end up paying back $11,433. That is more than double, it looks like, of yeah. what you are, double what you actually pay, what you actually charge. Who wants to take 23 years to pay for a bedroom set or a living room set, you know, that you put on a credit card? And then it tells you, you know, right under that, they say if you make a payment of $182, um, it'll take you three years to pay off that balance, which you actually, with the interest and everything, you're going to pay back approximately um, $6,500, as opposed to $11,400 if you were only making um, the minimum payment. So, you know, I challenge um, all of us watching, you know, to start paying attention to what these credit card companies, companies are telling you, um, or your credit issuer is actually telling you. They're giving you the information right in front of you, and they're telling you, hey, you can make this $52 payment if you want, but this is how long it's going to take you to pay it back. And when you do pay it back, this is how long it's going to take you, and this is how much you're actually going to end up paying back. Um, and of course, all of these numbers are, you know, contingent upon your interest rate and that kind of thing. But um, it's very enlightening and eye-opening to um, actually zoom in on one of these little boxes and see a real example of, you know, what only making the minimum payment um, will actually do to um, your financial your financial picture. You know, you only charge, or you know, your balance was fifty two hundred. You actually ended up paying back eleven thousand um, dollars. Whereas, you know, of course, we don't know what the interest rate here is, and somebody really good at math could figure that out. Um, but you know, if you make a payment of one hundred and eighty two dollars, which is um, a little more than double um, your fifty two dollars, was a little bit more. But that's okay. You know, something more than at least the fifty two dollars. Oh, hey, Karen. <laughs> you, um, it'll take you. 
three years approximately to pay that back. And now you're only paying back $6,500. And of course that's, you know, contingent upon the interest. So this is just an example. I thought that this was really like a um, very eye-opening uh, thing to see because a lot of times we ignore that little box on our credit card statement, but the information is there. And I um, encourage us to start paying attention to that when we start getting credit card statements in. Okay, and let me, I just wanna stop here for a second. If you have questions, um, there is a question and answer or a chat feature. There's actually both of them. Um, if you're watching and you have a question that you'd like to ask, you can drop it either in the Q&A or the chat section. I can check both here. And then at the end, um, we'll do our best to um, answer those questions live or to type a response to you um, where you'll be able to see. So there's a chat and a Q&A section. Um, on your device that you're watching on and feel free to type a question if you have a question, if we haven't answered it. And at the end, uh, we'll do our best to answer it live or through a message to you. All right, so my credit score isn't great. Can I still qualify to get a credit card? Oh, that's y'all. <laughs> sure. I'll let Miss Karen jump in. Karen's our, our loan manager, so she's got all the right answers. Oh, no, not all the time. Close <laughs> to, <laughs> but thank you. Uh, what was her question again? No, so, we don't look at it. We don't, credit scores don't have anything to do with a credit card. You getting a credit card, the way we look at it. Um, we look at your relationship, your history. Um, the only thing that the score actually does is determine what your interest rate is. So no, in, a, in an answer to that, score doesn't have anything to do with it. Now, of course, if you have, you know, a bunch of charged off credit cards and that, that type stuff, we may look at trying to do a secured card for you to get you started on the right path and then down the road, change that into a regular credit card. So a secure card would be um, if I came in and I had um, $1,000 cash, um, basically that money would be put away in an account or something for me, but I would be um, charging on that, my own $1,000 basically, and paying myself back, but it would be reporting to the credit bureau? Correct, correct. And then so, if I do well with that over a certain amount of time, then um, potentially I could qualify, come back in and demonstrate that I've you know, paid it back um, and that kind of thing. And potentially I could qualify to get a regular credit card with a higher limit maybe. That is correct. Okay, awesome. Um, so we have a question here in the chat. It says, so if your bill is due on the 8th, how many days before the interest actually hit? Is it like after 30 days or is it just after your grace period? I would think after your grace. After your grace period. I would think after your grace period, but I would double check on that if you can get me whose name it is. Mm -hmm. And I will, you and know, email them back or call them back. Right, and so this one, we don't know if, um, and I can type it in if this is a Southwest credit card, which we hope it is, um, but if it's not, um, that could be contingent upon the um, credit card issuer and how they. Um, I, right, I would think as long as you paid it before your grace period and they, you know, they have the money that you wouldn't be paying any interest because you know you have a grace period but i would like to double check on that because it may be you just don't pay a late charge you know it may be by your due date gotcha all right so let's see and that that information may be on your statement um you know it's not a southwest card if you have a credit card for someone else and you're inquiring you may want to look on your statement um like on the back of the statement where uh, they give you a lot of information, that information may very well be there. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh, there we go. So um, 
I've heard about, you know, that you can get credit increases on a credit card and I've heard different things. So should you re request an increase or should you wait until the credit issuer um, or the credit card issuer offers you an increase? You can increase it any time. It's, it's not going to hurt you unless, you know, some people are just trying to build their credit. They're not actually using the credit card per se because we get a lot of them. It's like, well, you don't really have a balance, but they're wanting to get their score up higher because the more availability you have, the higher your score will go. So it's, it's I mean, we don't per se at this time, now down the road we will, um, you know, try to, you know, unless you're coming in and we see that you have a thousand dollar limit and feel like, well, he's been paying us, let's see if he wants an increase, you know, um, it's, it's not going to hurt him either way. Okay. Unless, unless they're doing a lot of shopping out there to where... <laughs> they're maxed out or if they went and applied for a bunch of other credit. Gotcha, all right. So I already have a credit card that I use, but I like a better credit card. What are my options? Ready? Yes. Go ahead. Um, yeah, you wanna talk about the balance transfers. Okay, so your options are, you know, first of all, we do balance transfers. There's no, uh, there's no fee for that. Um, so our, our credit cards are here at the credit union, whether you do, um, want to do it to get a lower interest rate, we're going to help you do that naturally. Um, once you do that, once you apply for it, we get you approved. As soon as your card, you you, your card comes in, come in and we'll help you take care of the rest of it. Um, but our rates, I can tell you are a lot lower than most institutions. So the no fee, no, ba no fee balance transfer to a lower credit card. So for instance, if I had a, another big box bank credit card that um, I've been having for a while, and that's the card that I've been using to charge on, but my interest rate is, you know, 20 something percent. And I hear that you guys have, or we, Southwest Louisiana Credit Union, has uh, offers much lower rates on these cards. Um, potentially, I have, and I have a thousand dollars charged on my big box bank credit card. Um, I could come in, say, get approved for a, a smart Visa Rewards credit card, and then for no cost, I could transfer that thousand dollars that was on my other credit card to my new Smart Visa um, Rewards credit card through Southwest um, at a lower interest rate. So that I, that that will end up saving me money, correct? Correct. Awesome. And it won't cost me anything to do to transfer that balance over. And I could yeah. potentially still keep that other credit card as a line of credit because I've been having it for a while. Yes. And you you want to make sure that if you your oldest trade line you want to keep because that's how the credit bureau kind of scores you. You know, it plays a factor in how they arrive at your score. So you want to make sure you do keep that oldest trade line open. Very good. So, you know, it's a really good idea. Um, and when I was creating this, I, I wanted to make a slide that actually said, um, don't get, um, don't get, you know, re reeled in by the free beach towel. And so I have a story with that. Uh, when I got my first credit card, um, I think I was, at this time, they could market to college students. I don't think you can market to like on college campuses and things anymore. I think that's become like illegal. Um, but um, I got reeled in or raked in with a free beach towel, actually. So someone like dangled like this really pretty um, purple and teal green beach towel in front of me as a young college student. 
and um, to apply for a credit card. Um, and I just wanted the stupid free towel, like yeah, for whatever reason, <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty. So I, I applied for this credit card. I, I, I can't remember who it was through, but um, I applied for this credit card just to get the beach towel. Um, and of course there was probably some introductory rate or some other selling point that the person who was pitching the credit card um, offered to me, like probably like 0% interest, you know, but for only like the first, you know, three months and that kind of thing. And then it went up to probably 27%, but I didn't hear any of that. I only wanted the beach towel. And so whatever I had to do to get it, I was going to get it. So uh, within reason. So um, I, I got the credit card and I put out the paperwork, got the uh, beach towel and um, that's all I wanted. I never even, I think I probably used the card a time or two but never realized like how much interest was attached to that card. Um, so I'm sure I got myself into a bind at some point um, where I was getting all these late fees and things like that because I was fresh in college and nobody cares about paying their credit card bills in college. They're just out there just, you know, enjoying life and getting free beach towels. Um, so, you know, just be mindful um, of uh, the offers that are, that people present to you um, our credit card companies may send you in the mail. Um, it may sound really good where they say, you know, 0% interest. Um, well, that's, there's usually a um, star or something next to that. And it'll tell you that's an introductory rate, which means that after that introductory period is over, which is usually sometimes 90 days, three months. Um, after that, your interest rate goes to like 28%. Um, so, you know, you're no longer getting that you're no longer getting that zero percent. So um, what you're paying for, you're paying 27 or 28 percent interest on whatever it is that you're buying. So just be uh, mindful of the, the dangling carrot kind of deal um, that you don't fall into uh, those, um, those traps um, with zero percent interest because trust me, it won't stay zero percent interest. Um, so there'll be like an introductory rate. I don't just do it for the free beach towel. Um, unless you have some kind of really strict plan that you're gonna cut it off, but don't just don't even fall into that trap. Don't even fall into that trap. Um, it's too risky. Um, so just be mindful of the ways that um, you know some of these larger companies will try to um, get you with different gimmicks and things like that to buy uh, get you roped into a credit card with a very high interest rate, as opposed to what we offer here at Southwest Louisiana Credit Union. It's our Smart Visa Rewards credit card that we're going to get into, I think, right now. Let's see. Well, after this. Um, so here's another question that we've been asked before. Um, I've been using a credit card for a long time. I've been having a credit card for a long time, but I don't use it. Um, should I close it? No. No. <laughs> so keep your accounts open. Um, because this helps your credit score by protecting your oldest trade line. Um, right. And so um, a tip for keeping those cards open um, is to set up auto pay to pay one bill on that card that you've been having for a long time, but you don't use, put one card on it. I mean, put one bill on it and then set up an auto pay for that card to be paid through your bank account. So that way you don't have to try to keep up with paying it. Um, you can set up an auto pay um, to where your bank account pays that card every month for that bill that's attached to it. Um, that way you still have some activity on it and you still get the benefit of the, um, I'm not sure what it's called, Karen, but your like the life, your credit life, like the time that you've had that oldest trade line. Um, right. So you still get to maintain, you don't lose all that time. So um, the card that I've been having for a very long time, um, I and I, I myself did a credit tra a balance transfer here when I learned about the great benefits of the Southwest credit card. I transferred my balance over. I kept that card open and it's still open. Um, but what you do is just put something small on it um, so that and set up where it's auto paid so that there's still some activity on that card. Um, and I still get to maintain my longest line of credit. That is correct. Anything y'all want to add there? You think we covered it? I think we covered it. Okay. Heather, do you have anything? Oh, Heather. Hey, Heather. Is she on? 
Heather might be muted. I'm not sure. Heather, are you there? She may not be able to. Um, she may not be able to talk. So let's talk about our smart visa. So you heard me mention a few times um, the Southwest credit card. Um, so it's our, sm our smart visa um, credit card here at Southwest Louisiana Credit Union. Um, we're actually rolling this new card out here very soon. If you come in to apply for a card um, right now, we actually have something in here shortly that we'll, um, you can actually take a picture of and actually take you straight to the link for our credit cards. Um, anything that you apply for right now with our smart visa, that's going to be rolling out here in the next few uh, the next few days. So um, on or about the 17th, we're going to have a new visa credit card that's coming out. Um, but it has a lot of the same um, perks that our other visa, our other credit card had on it. We're keeping all those great things, just adding some new rewards, a new look, and that kind of thing. Um, so Karen or, or Ms. Cheryl, tell us, you know, about some of the great things that our um, our visa credit card had, like will have, and has always had here um, at the credit union. Uh, well, we the new credit. The, the old credit card had, um, you know, there's no annual fee, which the new card has the same thing. This is all um, about the new card here. And I think it's the same. So um, all these great benefits are transferring over. So no annual card. fee. No annual fee, no um, cash advance or, you know, purchase, cash advance and purchases are the same interest rate. In other words, like if you had a card in Capital One and you went in or went through their ATM and did a cash advance, you would be paying a higher interest rate. We don't do that. Everything is what your interest rate is. Okay. Um, and so our Smart Visa Rewards credit card has the 24-hour fraud monitoring. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, like Karen was saying, you know, it's no, um, additional fees or anything like that for your balance, for your, um, cash advances, which that's pretty, uh, that's great in and of itself, because a lot of times, um, it costs you a whole heck of a lot more to get cash off of a, a credit card, um, than it is to charge something on your credit card. And you can, if you have another credit card somewhere, you, you'll see that, um, on your credit card offers on your statements, it'll tell you how much interest is charged, uh, what the difference is in the interest that's charged to get cash off of your card. Um, so, and you can use this card anywhere. The Visa logo is shown or displayed. Um, we have a wonderful rewards um, program with You Choose Rewards um, that you can redeem for um, travel points, um, other items, things, gifts, gift cards, all types of things like that. Um, that you'll be able to redeem your points for. Um, so it's just a wonderful credit card. And then it's a fixed rate. I don't know if Karen stressed that, but it is a fixed rate. Um, a lot of credit cards and most credit cards have variable rates um, sometimes. So, you know, what you come in with and what you get, that's, that's fixed. So you don't have to worry about it ballooning or going up, you know, three months later. Um, we're going to be transparent with you. And uh, that rate that you get at the time of your application, you can keep that rate. Um, you can keep it um, and they start out really low. So, um, you know, our, our highest rate is still even lower than what these other um, big, box, big, big box banks are offering you. Um, so our, our highest rate is still a really low rate is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. So I would start out at seven point nine nine and go up to seventeen point nine nine. So, um, so like Karen said, they start out at seven point nine nine and go up to seventeen point nine nine, which is still lower than after the three months that you get that introductory rate of zero percent at a big box bank. You more normally it'll shoot up to at least in the mid twenties. So 25, 27, 28 percent. So that's still much lower than that. Um, so I tell people all the time, if you're going to have a credit card, you need to have a Southwest Louisiana uh, Visa Rewards credit card. Um, that's the card that you want to have, and that's the card that you want to use. 
Um, and I know that I work here, but if I didn't work here, I would still want a Southwest credit card um, in my pocket because it's gonna offer you um, the greatest benefits, the lowest interest rates. Um, and just, you know, there's so many perks that comes with our credit cards um, that you just you will not find on, um, you know, on a bit, another big box bank credit card. And you can compare them yourself, come in and talk to us. We'll be happy to go side by side and show you. Um, I, I don't think that you can beat it. I really don't. But um, so anyway, we just wanted to kind of go over what some of the benefits are. Um, with our Smart Visa Rewards credit card. Um, and uh, this is uh, the, all this stuff is also available now if you have a credit card with us now. Um, these are the same great benefits. Um, our, the rewards program is just changing um, and it's just uh, it's getting better and better. But um, fixed rate, the same, uh, no balance transfer fees, same APR for advances and purchases. Um, that has always been. And uh, we want to continue to offer that um, to our members. And we will. And Makita, I wanted to throw one thing in there. Also, if, if you come in and you're reestablishing credit and say like you have a higher interest rate starting off, does not mean six months down the road that you can come in and, and get an increase. You know, and if, if you have done everything that you're supposed to do, we can get you into a lower rate. Very good point. Very good point to make. Uh, Ms. Karen, I have a question here in the box that says, how often should you use your credit card in order to keep it open before the card is closed by the institution? So I know earlier I gave the example of a monthly bill coming out, that but do you different. have to use it? Do you have to use it every month or just, you know, every few months put something on it? If you use it every few months, but I have been told um, by Equifax way back in some training that if you just put $10 a month, even on in gas on your car, then that will, you know, keep it open. Gotcha. So even if it's $10 a month, try to use it at least once every month. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Thank you um uh for putting that question there in the chat remember um if you have a question or you'd like to um, make a statement please post it in the question and answer and we will do our best here i'm checking uh constantly to see if we have questions there and i'll try to answer them either live or type an answer to you um so again going back to our uh choosing smart so choose smart our southwest louisiana uh, smart visa credit card um, actually, I don't know if you're watching on a computer, if you have your smartphone available, um, all you do is open your camera and put it here next to the QR code on the screen. It'll take you straight um, to our page where you can um, learn about our credit card and uh, even apply for a credit card there. Um, our credit card, like I said, is going through a conversion here soon uh, in the look and our rewards program is changing, but our new credit card is going to look like what you see here on the screen, but you can go ahead and get your application in and Ms. Karen and her team are going to work that up for you and, um, you know, they'll call you if they have any questions or things like that, but they can get started working your application for you and uh, you'll be getting one of these new smart visa credit cards in the mail. Um, so the easiest thing to do, you can go on our website um, and access the application there, or you can uh, open your smartphone and put your camera to that QR code on the screen. It'll take you right to the page where you can um, learn about it and apply for our Smart Visa Rewards credit card. Um, again, if you have any questions, they don't have to be related to our credit card. They can be about um, credit cards in general. Make sure that you drop that in the chat. I think there's another one there. I'm going to go check it here shortly. Let's see what we got. Oh, oh, that's the two that I had just now. There we go. Um, so this just talks about our perks and our rewards. Again, our new program is called the You Choose Rewards. Um, a lot of great institutions are offering You Choose Rewards as their um, the company that does and manages the rewards program. It's a really popular one um, because the rewards and the perks are really, really good. Um, so like I said, you know, just be mindful um, that whenever you're using a credit card and some people use that credit card just for the sake of points. 
because they know they're trying to build up points because they use that to travel, to get airline tickets, to get hotel stays. Um, just be mindful when you're using it, you know, and make sure that, you know, that what you're spending or what you're charging is the benefits. It's going to, you know, you're adding up to um, what you're trying to achieve. And that, like I said, you're not spending $5,000 to get two points, you know, <laughs> where, yeah, yeah. you know, what's that going to do? So, but, you know, putting yourself deeper in debt for the purposes of trying to redeem for a Chili's gift card for $10, you know? Um, so that's fine if it builds up to that, but you don't want to be $20,000 in debt on a credit card and all you got was a Chili's gift card. We all like Chili's, that's wonderful, but you don't want to get $20,000 in debt to get a Chili's $10 gift card either. Um, so <laughs> our YouTube Rewards program is uh, really exciting. And so you'll be learning more about that soon. If you uh, take advantage of the our new uh, program that we're offering. So we have a question here and uh, Ms. Jones is saying, what does your credit score have to be in order to receive the lowest uh, APR? Uh, Ms. Karen, I know we talked about that, you know, your credit uh, score doesn't necessarily impact if you can get a credit card, um, but she's asking, you know, do you have to have a particular score to get the lowest Seven. APR? Yeah. 730 and above. So that's what we call A plus credit here. So mm -hmm. 730 and above will get you um, the lowest, I'm sorry, the lowest APR, the lowest interest rate um, on um, our Smart Visa Rewards credit card. Mm -hmm. We hope that that answered your question. Ms. Jones, um, let's see what's next here. So this is just a summary. Um, and so, Ms. Cheryl, you, you want to take some of these and just kind of, you know, just provide some, um, some details or just some tips on some of these points that we've made throughout, the, throughout our workshop? Yeah, I can. Um, so it's true that credit cards can be dangerous. Um, like you said before, if you don't plan ahead um, or don't plan on how to use them, if you don't pay them um, on um, the due date, then you are going to be uh, charged uh, late fees, which can be up to $35. Um, if you're not paying off your balances, um, and kind of going back to the little box that you showed, if you only pay the minimum, minimum amount versus if you pay extra on your cards, um, that interest is being charged on the balance. So that's why it shows like your balance is 5,200. And then if you just pay the minimum, then you're going to end up paying 11,000 on it. Um, so just be mindful of that. Um, be responsible with paying, with using your credit card. Um, okay. And Ms. Karen just said for us here at Southwest Credit Union, our late charges are 25. A lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of the, uh, the big, Big banks they charge up to 35 and above. And ours is up to 25. Right. Okay. Um, so you want to make sure that um, like she said, you know, getting a credit card can be great in building good credit history. Um, credit cards can give you between one, one and two percent back on every purchase. So there are some credit cards that have cash back options. Well, you can get one to two percent back on the purchases that you make, which is more, which is money back in your pocket. Um, and you can easily track your discretionary spending in one place and manage your cash flow. I know that just as an example, um, we don't want to talk about the hurricanes, but um, when we all evacuate, when I evacuated for the hurricane, you know, you put everything on the. A lot of people said, you know, put it on the credit card. These, um, you know, the things that you had to buy when you evacuated and, and everything, so that you could keep track of all the things that you spent, whether it was your hotel, whether you had to buy food, whether you had to buy toiletries, you had a, um, your statement would show, you know, everything that you had to spend when you evacuated. Now that could be true for like, just even creating a monthly budget. Um, and you know how much you want to put on your credit card with a budget. You can go and see, you know, what you chart, what you're spending on uh, dining, what you're spending on, you know, um, shopping or what you're spending on gas. Um, and that kind of thing, if you're putting that on a credit card each month. So, you know, just kind of, it will show you, um, just like your debit card will do, you know, you can look at your statement and see where your money went. But, you know, with the credit card, you're, you can choose how you pay that back 
um, or how long you take to pay that back um, when you're managing your budget. Um, and it offers a backup to emergency savings. So uh, I know my personal thing is I don't, I don't necessarily like to use a credit card unless it's for emergency purposes. Or, you know, if it's something uh, particular, I always say if it's something that I don't want to pay for. <laughs> As in, you know, like an emergency expense, I got to get a new tire or something that I didn't necessarily plan for. Um, or, you know, an appliance or something goes out that I didn't, you know, I didn't have plans on having to buy. Um, I don't want the money to come out my check, you know? So I want to put that on a credit card um, and, and pay it back um, responsibly um, over time. So that's what that's what it means when it says offer a backup to an emergency savings. So it's just peace of mind. You know, if I'm traveling, you know, to know that if I, at least I got a credit card, if something happens and I got to, you know, book an unexpected plane ticket or, you know, just something happens when I'm away from home and I, maybe I don't have access to the monies that I wanted to specific monies that I wanted to use for traveling, at least I know there's a credit card that has, you know, a decent amount on it that I can use if, God forbid, I need to use that money. So um, it's a kind of peace of mind to just have that available to you if you need to use it. Um, it provides greater fraud and purchase protection than debit cards. So, you know, you know, you, something happens and, um, you know, you need to dispute something you know, the credit card company or issuer um, will work with you on your behalf to try to get those charges and things like that taken care of um, on your purchases or maybe things that you didn't make. So, or services that you didn't receive. Um, and I just want to say, even, even to that point, when you're traveling, use it for hotels, um, rent, a, rent a car, because um, sometimes you will get charges. If you're using your debit card, you will get charges and if they charge you for something that you weren't expecting um, to happen, if you're using your debit card, it will tie up your funds, your, your funds from your account um, versus if you had a credit card, then that can be disputed. And like you said, the, um, your cre the credit card companies will work with you in trying to get that resolved. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to tie up your, your funds that you need in your account. Your liquid money. So your liquid right. money the money that you actually have that you can touch and feel, um, that's a great point to make that it won't tie up um, tie up that money. So um, very, very good point and very good thing to remember, you know, um, when you're um, choosing to, when you're thinking, considering using a credit card. Um, so it says here, we talked about the fraud protection. If you decide to apply for a credit card or begin using one regularly, do so responsibly. And we talked about that before. That's just basically having a plan um, to repay it, you know, don't just go out and buy things because you have a credit card or because you have credit to do so. Um, you want to think about how long it's going to take you to pay that back, how quickly you can pay that back, and for the least amount of cost uh, or for the cheapest way to pay it back. Um, no one wants to pay more for something than they actually pay for it. Um, so you want to do that at the lowest rate as po lowest rate as possible. So that's why you want a credit card if you're going to have to have some. If you're going to have to, uh, if you can't pay it off every month, and you're going to, you know, run into where you're going to have interest attached to it, uh, make sure that it's low interest. Um, you don't want to go with something that has a, an astronomical amount of interest attached to it because that just means that you're paying that much more for what you purchase. Um, and like I said, who wants to pay more for something than they actually pay for it? Um, so only charge what you can repay in full each month. You know, that's ideal. Um, but we know that, you know, sometimes you can't pay it all off each month. Um, and you may not even want to pay it all off. That may be the whole point that you're using a credit card. Um, but just again, have a plan. If you can pay it off, pay it off. If you have to carry a balance, that's okay. Just make sure that, you know, you're getting the best interest rate as far as the lowest interest rate as possible um, on that. And um, if you must finance a large purchase, don't spend more than you can afford to pay back in, um, in a little over a year. You know, you don't want to be paying for something five years, you know, for five years that broke two years ago, you know, <laughs> or that you don't even have, you don't even have anymore. Um, so you want, you know, the, the ideal it says is 15 months. You know, so just something that you can pay back in a reasonable amount of time. You know, like I said, you don't want to be paying for something that broke two years ago and it's, you know, eight years later, you're still paying for it. Um, all right. And it says use a credit card for the lowest interest rate you can find. So um, these are just some tips, you know, and just a summary of kind of what we talked about. 
um, on today. So just use all these tips and things um, when you're thinking about getting a card or getting a new card or adding a card to your um, to your wallet. Um, but make sure that you're using, you can have other cards, but make sure that you're using the card that's going to work best for you. Um, and so uh, I, I, I think that we have the best credit card out there and um, we welcome you to come and talk to us about it. We'd be happy to, you know, look at, uh, look at your card side by side and, and you know, see um, where, where your greatest benefits and where your greatest perks are, where your lowest interest rate is. Those are the things that's going to matter, especially your interest rate. Um, so think about these things when, like I said, when you're applying for a card, when you're going out and looking for a card, um, don't apply for a whole bunch of credit cards. Though. So do your research ahead of time. <laughs> so that because that'll impact your credit score too. So you don't want to go out and just start applying for a whole bunch of cards and then try to figure out which one's best at that point. Um, so that's why we're giving you some information here today that you can use um, so that you will consider um, a Southwest Louisiana Visa Smart Rewards credit card. Um, because like I said, if I didn't have this shirt on and I wasn't here on this screen, I would still want this credit card um, because it absolutely has the best interest rate and the best perks and benefits out there. Let's see what, oh, this is, this is my last slide. And so um, we're Southwest Louisiana Credit Union and we are just so happy that you took time out of your uh, lunch break or your day just to join us um, for this uh, Smart Money Moves 2021 Zoom um, for the month of May. And so um, that QR code here again is available to you. Um, it will take you um, to our website where you can learn more about the products and the services that we offer. If you have questions, we're still here. Drop them in the chat or drop them in the question and answer. We'll be happy to answer them for you. Ms. Karen or Ms. Uh, Cheryl, do you guys have anything else you'd like to add? No, ma'am, just no, come and have them come and see us. Come and see us, and you can actually apply for any of um, our credit cards, um, obviously is what we're talking about, but you can apply for any type of loan um, or credit cards straight from our website. Um, so if you have a smartphone, you can actually point your smartphone camera to the QR code on the screen, and it will take you straight to our website where you can learn more. Again, thank you for joining us um, here on the noon hour uh, for this Smart Money Moves 2021, everything you need to know about credit cards. We are Southwest Louisiana Credit Union, and we can't wait to see you in one of our branches soon. Thanks so much, and y'all have a great day.